sun is setting, not only on another picturesque day on the plains, but on the Auburn lacrosse season. It's been a season of up and downs for the Tigers, but today the Auburn Tigers face off against Clemson in an opportunity to help burst a bubble right here on Weagle 91.1. FM. My name's Noah Phillips. Sack card right next to me. Jack Corbett is on camera for right now, but he'll be joining the broadcast in a quarter or two. But Zach, it's senior night here on the Plains. Can you walk me through some of the, the feelings some of the seniors might be feeling right now? Yeah, as a senior myself, getting ready to graduate in May, it's a bit of a surreal feeling for us seniors. They're ready to come out here, put it all on the line. Last time playing in front of this Auburn home crowd. Uh, and, and they're Looking towards postseason, this won't be the last time they play together. They have another game on the road at Alabama in Vestavia Hills, uh, just outside of Birmingham. But these seniors probably playing it with a with a bit of a heavy heart, uh, not ready to give up lacrosse, not ready to, to get out into the into the world yet. But they're going to come out here and really give it all for their teammates. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I am thankful I'm a junior and I got one more year to come out to these broadcasts. I'm not thankful to take some more classes, but these <laughs> broadcasts are the thing that make me wake up in the morning. The seniors for the Auburn Tigers are as follows. Number one, Collie Blythe. Number two, Bradley Meach. Number six, Zach Jones. Number 14, Hunter Buttersworth. Uh, number 27, Jake Kreffitz. Number 28, Michael Pinheiro. Number 29, a captain of this team, Jordan Selesley. Number 37, Nick Filla. And uh, somebody that was medically retired last year, number 12, Joey Denave. I would also like to point out, I have made cards and put them on the uh, top right of the screen. I know it may be a little bit of a, a uh, eye squinter, but those are our seniors for these Auburn Tigers as they are about to take the field for one last time here in the Auburn Sportsplex. It'll be Jake Kreffitz and number 40, um, Owen Armont for Clemson taking this face off. Both teams are down. 15 minutes is on the clock, and away we go. That one's going to hit the referee as this one starts off. We got a little bit of a scrum to start this game up, but it's going to be picked up by number 19, Derek DeAngles, another captain of the squad, as there is a penalty on the ground as Clemson picks it up, and there's the referee's whistle. Yeah, we start off this game with a nice old-fashioned ground ball. Bodies flying everywhere. Finally, Auburn picks up the ball. Uh, but with the push in the back by Clemson, they'll get sent to the box, man down just 15 seconds into this game. Yep, and we'll look to see who this penalty is on, if I can pick up my papers. Again, folks, thank you for turning in, uh, tuning into this ball game. It'll be on number 40, uh, person that took Owen Armont, the face-off specialist of this game so far. It'll be a 30-second penalty, 21 seconds remain of it, 14.33 left on the game clock. This one goes around the bend to Thomas Hudiker. He'll pass back to number 10, Jamie Maroney. Maroney over to number six, Zach Jones. So Leslie to Hudiker, who's going to shoot, but it's off the goalie stick, and it'll go the other way. Yeah, they did a great job working the ball around the horn on that one. Uh, they worked on it just before the game started, worked on that uh, man down defense and offense, and, you're showing, and they're showing it early. This one, after a big hit by the Auburn Tigers, this ball is free, and Zach Jones will pick it up on the right side of the attacking third. Jack, go wide. Auburn will pick this one up just in front of the midfield logo. It'll be Selesley over to number six zones. Pass to the middle. That one cannot find its mark. That was number 32, uh, Ian, Ian Calvert, who uh, tried to get that shot off, but it just couldn't fall. Yeah, it was a great pass into the cut from Zach Jones. Just couldn't get it to holding his stick well enough to be able to get it and fire the shot. So Leslie picks this one up from the top of the attacking third. He's going to cut to his left. He'll take a shot, but he'll score. So Leslie makes it one nothing. a great picturesque start for the senior captain. Yeah, great job from so Leslie on this one. You see him size up his guy at the point, switches hands. He goes from right to left, probably more comfortable on his left side, gets a step on his guy and lets it. Let's it fire down at the goalie's feet. Nothing you can really do to stop that. A great shot by Selesley. A reminder, Auburn is currently 21st in a couple of the media rankings. I believe they're 20th in the MCLA rankings. They're looking to be in the top 16 
or win the SELC tournament to make the national championships down in Little Rock. Clemson is going to pick this one up, but they'll lose it. Now it's going to be picked up by number 44, uh, Dominic Anacarico, but Clemson is going to pick this one up, and they'll be awarded that ground ball. 13.07 left in this first quarter. Back to number 16, Hudson Higgins. Now to number three, Pierce Crawley, who's going to shoot, but it's saved by Craig Morgan. Now back to number 44, Dominic Anacarico makes a pass to number 26, uh, Jack Slack, and he's going to get in on goal, passes back to Zach Jones. As there's a penalty flag up in the air, Auburn has an advantage. 12.30 left in the first quarter. Another man up opportunity for Auburn. You see them score on the last one. Hopefully they'll get, or they're hoping to get the same thing here. Zach Jones out to Jordan Selesley. Back to number 25, uh, Ian Fitzgerald. Keep forgetting he's not wearing 20 anymore. Zach Jones back to number 32, uh, Andrew Luff. He's going to shoot, but it's saved, and that's the referee's whistle. Auburn will get the ball back with a man up. Yeah, great job by Andrew Love. Gets a, gets a step on his guy like Leslie did on the last goal. Decides to shoot, but puts it in a spot where the goalie can get a hold of it. And uh, crisis averted for Clemson for now. It'll be on Clemson. It'll be a one-minute penalty. Back to Ian Fitzgerald. So Leslie now at the top of the attacking third. Back to Zach Jones. Auburn continues to go around the bend. Back to Jones. Back to Selesley. Back to Fitzgerald. Selesley. Jones he has to jump for that. Back to number 10, Jamie Maroney. Selesley. Back to Maroney. He'll shoot, but it goes wide left. Yeah, great job. You just want to play it. Uh, you never want the ball to stay in the same spot when you're in a man up because you've got guys on offense. You have the advantage in numbers. And you're always looking to find that space. Zach Jones shoots, hits the top of the post. This one is going to be picked up by number 25, Ian Fitzgerald, but is picked up by the Clemson Tigers. Yeah, great job and goal for the Clemson Tigers so far, stopping some, some really good looks. Uh, we saw weak side, Zach Jones gets a good shot from the right when everyone's focused on the left side. And then right after that, off a of ground ball, a quick shot, he's able to stop and get going. Ten seconds still on the man up opportunity for all, the Auburn Tigers as so Leslie picks this one up. Needs something fast. Over to Zach Jones. Makes a long pass to Hudiker, who will shoot. That's going to be a ground shot that hits the back of the net. Hudiker makes it 2-0. And that's exactly what I'm talking about there with weak side. When you have a man up like that, you have the numbers, you have the advantage. Everyone's looking at the ball. If you just make that backdoor cut like Hudiker did on that one, and it's an easy goal for you to find the back of the net. An easy go goal for Hudiker indeed as Crefitz will re-enter the face-off circle once again. 10.57 left to go in this first quarter. Crefitz. This ball is going to be picked up by Clemson after a box-out play, but Auburn's going to pick this one back up. Now it's back over to number three, Casey Lynchoni. He'll pick it up. He'll cross nearly into the attacking third but he'll have to back it out. Uh, excuse me, Auburn's going to set something up. Back to number 17. I will even lost the ball, folks. Andrew Thasher. Back to number six, Zach Jones. Now to number 13, Chris Bocic. Hudiker. Lobato. Long pass nearly goes awry for Hudson Carter. He'll cut to his right, going around the crease. He'll pass to the middle for 77, Hudiker, who drops it. Hudiker fakes pass, goes to number five, Lobato. Lobato. Hudiker. He's going to cut to his right. Now to Jones on the goal line extended. Long pass to the top of the key for Bocic. Bocic is going to lose this one after a big hit, and Bocic is down, but it looks like he's going to be able to get back up. I believe it will be Clemson ball with 9.57, Auburn up 2-0. Yeah, great defense there from Clemson to get Bocic as he's coming in down the lane, get a good stick on his stick, ball comes out, and then defender comes in and lays a nice hit. Clemson will carry this one around into the goal line extended. They'll pick this one up too high for the Clemson Tigers, and it looks like they're going to have 
two on the sides as well. Three high now for the Clemson Tigers. Clemson in a in some beautiful orange uniforms. Auburn in the whites. Long run in for Clemson, but they'll have to pass it back out at the top. He'll make a move to his left. Passes to the middle. That's number 31, uh, Georgie Corbin. Corbin, he'll take a uh, spin move as Clemson is going to continue to carry this one around the bend. Nine minutes left to be played in this first quarter. Auburn, this is their first big defensive test. 20 seconds on the shot clock now for Clemson. He'll cut to his right. That's number 25, Maddox Davis. Long pass out. That's a ground shot that goes awry. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Clemson closest to it. Great job by Caleb Karanka on defense that time. He knows that the guy with the ball has to go right. He doesn't really have a left hand, and he forces him right and doesn't really give him a good look. Whole lot of sticks on the ball now as Auburn's going to pick this ball up. That's number 18, uh, Ethan Pustini, who's going to try to carry this one across, and he's going to make somebody miss on that one as there is a referee's whistle. This ball is going to go back to Clemson. I believe the ref got him for taunting. He does a spin move, dances around Clemson a little bit, and turns his head, looks back. I guess the ref saw that as disrespectful taunting and decided to give the ball back to Clemson on that. Yeah, I didn't exactly see the taunting either, Zach, but I am just a small-town bird lawyer and do not know much about the rules. Clemson, pick this one up from the top of your screen. Clemson still playing out pretty wide as there is a uh, flag is up in the air. Uh, Clemson now has the advantage. There'll be a man up whenever Auburn gets the ball back. Clemson still inside. That's number 16, Hudson Higgins. Clemson going around the side. They've got a run for number 25, Maddox Davis. Davis from the goal line extended. Now number 26, uh, Brooks Barrow. Barrow in on the crease. He's going to shoot, and he's going to score. Gets between Craig Morgan and the goal post somehow to make it 2-1. Yeah, great feed in there onto the crease, and just a great job to, to put it away for Clemson. Uh, shorten this lead up from Auburn down to 2-1. to 7.28 left in the ball game. Uh, it'll be Kreffitz again in the face-off square or circle for the Auburn Tigers. Aiden Garrett now inside the face-off circle. Thank you, Jack, for that one, as this is going to be a face-off infraction on Clemson. Auburn and the Whites will pick it up. I keep wanting to say Tigers, folks. I'm so sorry. It's just such a hard thing to break. When you can't use the mascot, it's really hard <laughs> to differentiate the teams. Jones now back to Hudson Carter. Jones on the right wing. Long pass inside, but it gets – a little bit too far out ahead of number 32, uh, Andrew Luff, and he cannot get to it as the defender was in his way. Yeah, a bit of a risky pass there from Zach Jones, but it's a good idea. Uh, there's no one on number 32, and he's got a good look if he can bring in the catch uh, to get on goal. 63 seconds on the shot clock, 6.48 on the game clock. Clemson will carry this inside their attacking third. Over to number Clemson now will carry it to his left. He's going to spin to his right. That's a pass to the middle. That's a shot and a goal for number 17, Michael Rice. Yeah, just like that, Clemson ties it back up. We see how explosive an offense this is. They get it right inside the point uh, and just let one loose from straight on goal. No one can really step up to him. He's got time and space to get a shot off, and he places it well around Craig Morgan. Number 22, Aiden Garrett, a freshman face-off specialist, will be in the circle now for the Auburn Tigers. There's the referee's whistle, and away we go. This one goes back towards Auburn's attacking half as Aiden Garrett's going to pick it up. He's going to shoot, and he's going to score. Garrett gets the face-off, and he gets a goal there. 3-2 is now your score. 
Great job by Aiden Garrett. That's a face-off specialist dream is just to get it, get down the pipe, and get a shot off. That's the first goal of, for him on the year and the first goal from a face-off specialist on the year for Auburn. Indeed, a great job by Garrett to carry that one through some contact as well. 3-2 is your score. 6.26 is left on the clock. As Garrett's going to pick this one up again, but he loses it. Thought he had another goal. He's going to take a little bit of a licking, but he's going to keep on ticking as this one goes back to number 26, Jack Slack. Great job again by Aiden Garrett to get that face off. Immediately loses it, but then gets right back on the ground ball and gets it set up for Auburn to facilitate some offense. Number 29, Jordan Selesley passes this one around as Miles Lebedo will carry it into the uh, attacking third and pass the goal line extended for the Auburn Tigers. Ian Fitzgerald on the top of your screen. He's going to carry it to his right. He's going to take a pass that goes awry out of bounds on Auburn. Clemson will have it the other way. Yeah, a little, just a little bit of miscommunication there between him and Zach Jones. Zach Jones wanted the cut, uh, and Fitzgerald thought he was going to stay outside. Uh, it just lets the pass go. Clemson with an opportunity to do something here. 5.30 was left in this game as the sun has nearly fully set on the Auburn Sportsplex. Clemson around the bend, takes a big hit. That's a shot and it's saved by Craig Morgan. You hear the crowd starting to yell, that's a head shot. Uh, it was a little bit, saw the attacker go low, defender meets him low. I think that's just a bang, bang play. Clemson pick this one up. They get it across uh, midfield. Spin move, cutting to his right. That's a great defensive effort from number two for the Auburn Tigers, a senior Bradley Meach. 66 seconds on the shot clock for the Clemson Tigers, 44-6 on the game clock. That's a pass to the inside, but it's going to be picked up by Craig Morgan. Great job there by Andrew Grubb to bat down that, that pass inside and allow Craig Morgan to jump on it. Now it's number three, Casey Lynchonis. He's going to take it across midfield with a great move. Now over to Zach Jones. He'll get a pick from Lynch from number three, Casey Lynchoni. He'll pass it back uh, to the top to number 29, uh, Jordan Selesley, another senior on this team. Back over to Zach Jones. Out of Hudson Carter. Out of number five, Miles Lobato. From the X, four minutes left in this first quarter. He'll take it to his right, spins to his left, gets a pick from Fitzgerald. A long pass to Zach Jones. He takes it, can't get the shot off. That's a shot there for Leslie, but it's just a little bit too much to the right, as I think they're going to say Fitzgerald was closest to it. Yeah, they did say Fitzgerald was closest to him. Great job by Zach Jones. Stepping in, draw the defense out, and then dump off the pass to, <coughs> excuse me, Andrew Luff. Shot goes a little bit wide, but still great offense. Fitzgerald gets a physical shot off there with 64 seconds on the shot clock. Auburn closest to it, 3.30 left in this first quarter. Auburn leads by one, 3-2. Zach Jones carries it to his left. Makes a pass inside to Leslie, but loses it. Clemson will take it the other way. Another risky pass from Zach Jones on there. It was a little more congested than it was last time. Two Clemson guys, two Auburn guys. Uh, I think a little bit too too risky for him in this stage of the game. It looks like Clemson is, and it looks like Clemson is going to take a timeout, and we're going to take one with them. Don't go anywhere, folks. Three two is your score. Auburn leads here on Weagle ninety one point one FM.
Welcome inside to the Auburn Sports Complex. Auburn leads 3-2 with 3-11 left in the first period. I apparently had the wrong roster for Clemson. Sorry, Clemson fans. That one's on me. <laughs> Clemson, carry it to the left side. They have an opportunity to tie this game back up at three. That's number three, uh, Ian Jackson, who will pass it off. And that's a big shot that goes over the net. That was number 16, uh, Tyler Roscoe. 3-2 is still your score. He's going to carry it inside, but that one's going to leave itself after some physical, physical play uh, there around the crease. Yeah, these Clemson – Attackers are not afraid to get in the face of these Auburn defenders, throw their body into them a little bit, aren't afraid to initiate the contact. And a Carrico will carry it across half field, this time for the Auburn Tigers, as Zach Jones will pick it up on the bottom half of your screen. Now back to number 32, uh, Andrew Luff. Now to number 29, so Leslie, he'll run this one in. He'll have to take a stop. Now back over to Zach Jones. Hudson Carter from the X, 2-11 on the game clock. Hudson Carter makes a long pass, but it's received by Selesley. Selesley on his run now. He'll cut to his right, gets a pass to Zach Jones, who shoots top of the net to make it 4-2. Auburn leads. Zach Jones, the senior, makes a highlight play. What a shot from Zach Jones on that one. Gets it. Just above goal line extended, lets it rip underhand slash sidearm, gets it to go right past the goalie's left shoulder, just perfectly placed in the top corner. A minute 58 left to be played in this first quarter. Auburn, there's the referee's whistle. That's a fight for it. That was number 22, Aiden Garrett, and number 40, uh, Jose Martinez with the fight there. This one's still on the ground, but it's picked up by Hudson Carter, and there's commotion on both benches after that hit. Back to number 50, Jackson Derrick, who's going to pass this one off to number 13, Chris Bocic. Now it's back to Derrick. There is a referee's flag that went up behind the goal. Yeah, away from the ball. I wonder if it was jawing or if it was a little bit of excessive contact from the defender back there. Minute 15 left in this first quarter. Auburn will have a man up advantage when the ball gets turned over. Bocic takes a shot and rips it. 5-2 is your score as Bocic lays one from a distance. Doesn't look like we'll have a man up situation for, the ti or for Auburn, not the Tigers. I uh, know. Uh, <laughs> But he just absolutely grips that one, gets a step on him going to the left and rips it sidearm. So fast, very hard to stop that shot if you're in goal. 5-2 is your score. A minute 05 left in this first quarter as it'll be Aiden Garrett yet again uh, in the face-off circle for the Auburn Tigers. And it'll be number 44, Maxwell Williams, taking the face-off honors in this matchup. Both players are down. Referee's whistling, away we go. This one goes behind Garrett, and he picks it up. Big hit, there's the referee's whistle, and a Aiden Garrett's gonna pick this one up. He'll go across midfield uh, with it, taking a lot of hits, and you can feel, ooh, you can see it. You can see the aggression from both sides. Let's get a little chippy out there for both sides. Taking a little exception to that hit that he took. Uh, but, uh, it's hard to say if there was anything there. He falls a little bit in the back. Uh, I know the Clemson fans are yelling about it, uh, but it's a tough, a tough call to make as a referee for that one. Now it's back to number 50, Jackson Derrick. Now it's over to number five, Miles Lobato, who's going to shoot. It'll go wide left. Auburn will be man up for the last 19.6 seconds of this first quarter. Yeah, great opportunity for Auburn to go into this first quarter break up six to two, possibly if they're able to work their offense in just 20 seconds. Looks to be like we thought number 44, Maxwell Williams will be the one to take this penalty for 
Clemson. It'll be only 30 seconds. Jordan Selesley. Or excuse me, Thomas Hoytker. Fitzgerald, Selesley. Back to Zach Jones. Hudson Carter in the middle. Back to Selesley. Back to number 10, Maroney. Now over to number 25, Ian Fitzgerald. He's going to get inside. That's a hook shot, and it's going to be picked back up by Fitzgerald after the save. Zero seconds on the game clock, and that is how this first quarter will end. 5-2. Auburn is currently leading the Tiger battle here on the Auburn Sportsplex. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Weagle 91.1 FM. Welcome back to the Auburn Sportsplex. Clemson trying to get rid of this ball, goes past into the attack and they get on it. Number 19 for Clemson, able to collect the ball. That's Rylan Haley. Interesting move by Clemson, Zach. Down three goals already after the first quarter. Ryan Haley has not recorded a stat this year. You'd think they'd want some goal scorers up there on offense, but they're taking a different approach to this Auburn defense, trying to see what they can get to work in this game. Yeah, not much has worked against this stout Auburn defense so far through one quarter. Craig Morton doing a fantastic job in goal. That's nothing new for Captain Craig. He's been solid all year. As that ball goes wide, Clemson will be closest, so they will bring it back into possession. Yeah, Tyler Roscoe's shot goes wide right. And a little bit of a line change for the Tigers now. And now we get going back into play. Well, in a second. All right, from goal line extended. That is number 19, Ryan Haley, pushing it across the arc. And a shot from the point goes wide. Gennaro Petrangolo, who has a goal tonight already, pushes that one wide, Auburn ball. Yeah, that's not a bad look for Clemson far out. But, yeah, like you said, goal tonight, five other goals on the season. So six for the season in total. He can get it in the back of the net. So I think Clemson, Clemson's offense is going to settle with that any day of the week. Yeah, exactly right. And Dominic Anacarico pushing this one into the Auburn attack. Yeah. Brought back out by Ian Fitzgerald. Slowed it down a little bit over to Luff. Still at the top. Zach Jones takes it from the far side, moving down the right. Switches to his left hand, back to his right. Spins up. Finds a cutter, but it's batted down by the Auburn, or by the Clemson defense, excuse me, as they try and get rid of this. 
Jones just trying to thread the needle there. But you know this Clemson defense already down three goals. They can't afford to let up anymore. If anything, they're trying to close that gap. So great defensive effort as we saw a huge hit there from the smallest guy on the field, Hudson Carter, only five foot five, but he absolutely levels that Clemson defender. Yeah, Hudson Carter, it's the goalie, John Hennessy, who's had a great game for Clemson Tigers so far today, giving, getting all they can from the Tigers. But, yeah, he gets him off a little off balance, hits him in the back, knocks him over, pretty big hit. We hear the reaction from the Auburn <laughs> yeah. bench about Yeah, they love it. You always love as an attacker when you can press and get a good hit on the goalie. Might not have been clean, but a, a, a good hit, he'll remember that one. Zach, I love the irony in that because all the defenders want to score a goal and then all the guys on attack just want to level a guy and get a huge hit. Yeah, so it's whatever it, you're not used to. Yeah. We currently have 12.46 left in this second quarter. Ball is not yet into possession, but so we are currently waiting on the ref's signal. It'll be a one-minute penalty for Hudson Carter. As an attacker, though, he probably thought that was worth it. Oh, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Clemson gets a goal here, and then Coach will be in his ear about it. But Clemson working it around the arc, being patient, as you should be. Auburn in a box and one defensive set with a man down, one in the middle, like a five on a dice. Switches the pass at the X, gets it around far side to number 19 for Clemson, back across, and they're working this ball around. Fake pass from Tyler Roscoe, finds another on the edge of the crease. I didn't catch who it was that scored a goal, but great job, backdoor cut. I didn't either because I was just so entranced by the fake pass. That whole play was created by that pump fake by Tyler Roscoe. He faked the pass to his left and sliced it right through the middle to get to the open man. and. Uh, Zach, I believe that goal was by Holden Morrison, who would make it would make sense because that would be his 35th goal on the year. He knows how to put one in the back of the net, but obviously for viewers at home, we are not certain on that goal right there. As go to kickoff, Aiden Garrett cannot secure the kickoff. Referee's whistle. Clemson offense is going to get the ball back once again, trying to tighten it up a little bit more. Clemson, here we go on the attack. Slowing it down, waiting for a couple more offensive changes for them, get the personnel that they want in as they try and shorten this lead once again. Auburn 5, Clemson 3. Ball at the X, bouncing around on the ground. In the crease, it'll be Auburn ball. That play was madness right there, Zach. Five or six bodies all in the circle, but now Auburn's offense finally looks to get another opportunity on goal as Casey Lynchoni brings this ball up, one of Auburn's captains, and they're going to get into their offensive set. And already out of the penalty is, <coughs> excuse me, Hudson Carter getting ready to get back on the offensive end. Lynchoni at the top fakes a shot. Passes it back out. Jackson Derrick surveying his options, weighing everything. Passes it out to the new man just substituted in, Hudiker. And that was great awareness by Derrick on that play just a couple seconds ago. He was going to get absolutely hit hard if he hadn't done that little slip behind the defender and brought it back out. As that ball is thrown at, Hudson Carter is going to bring it back in and use that blistering pace he has to try to get a goal. Yeah, extremely fast. You, you said it earlier, just 5'5", five, five, but he uses all of that frame for yeah. his speed. He doesn't play like someone that's 5'5". Five, five. He definitely commands more at attention and respect on the field than a guy that's so small because of just how skilled he is with the with the stick. That's right. Chris Bassich puts another good shot on t on on frame, but Hennessy in goal is doing another with another great save. Clemson bringing it up on a fast break it gets stopped by the Auburn defense, but forces a shot anyways. That'll go behind the net. Retains the ball for the Clemson Tigers. And, you know, a lot of viewers watching that might have not liked that shot, but I think that's a really good chance for Clemson. Bringing up the ball, their offense slowed down the pace. Change of pace right there right before the shot, put the Auburn defenders on their heels, and that gave them that opportunity just wide right of that bottom corner. Yeah, great call. Clemson now has it on the left side, faking a pass, spins left, 
takes a shot, but that goes wide as well. Clemson, again, has guys back there. It'll stay Clemson Tiger ball. Yeah, and that's another shot I think head coach for Clemson, Andrew Tobias, is going to live with. Ian Jackson has 13 goals on the year. I think he's okay with him taking that shot. Beautiful move by Clemson's offense right there. Looks like almost a Euro step you'd see in basketball. Can't get it to go, but it will stay with Clemson once again. That Euro step was by Gennaro Pitrangolo. was a nifty move, but cannot get it to go. As we have 17 seconds left on the shot clock. This one's coming down to the wire, but a huge hit as a flag goes up. Ball is loose, and it looks like Auburn is going to get to that, but a whistle is blown. Yeah, huge hit on that one. Missed it a little bit. Seemed like it was a little bit to the head. Maybe cross-check. Uh, we'll see what they say. Yeah, and Eamon Cummins, I think he knew that whistle was about to be blown. As he wasn't making that full sprint for that ball. As we do have 9 minutes and 28 seconds left in this second quarter. If you're just joining us, Auburn, Auburn has five goals leading Clemson to their only three. But there is a lot of time left to go in this game. And now we look to reset. Ball is not yet into play. Looks like it'll start off at the half with Petrangolo again as soon as the referee gives his sign. And that'll be a two-minute penalty for the Tigers. That'll be a big one to deal with. J.J. Arminio arguing with the ref a little bit, it seems, about that the severity of that call, two-minute, a major, is not one that you see in in these types of games a lot. But here yeah. we go, Petrangolo bringing it in now, swinging it left to right. Ball's on the ground already, and Auburn is just trying to fall on that one. Lands to Craig Morgan. He whips it up into the attacking area, but Clemson looks like they're going to fall and get that ground ball. And even though Clemson does get the ball back, that was great defensive work by Andrew Grubb. His swipe got the ball loose. Then he gets to collect it before it ends up in the hands of Morgan. So a great fake shot there by Tyler Roscoe. Fake, excuse me, fakes the pass to the left, gets it on frame to the right. Yeah, and he did that once before this quarter already. That's been Roscoe's bread and butter. First one he couldn't get to go, but the second one it pays off. And... That pass fake has really been doing this Auburn defense damage so far. Yeah, they just keep seeing the biting. Keep seeing, jeez. They <laughs> just seem to keep biting on that pass fake from Roscoe. Not much the Tigers have been able to do about that. Face-off win by Aiden Garrett. Gets it going into the attacking area. Dumps it off and gets out of there as the face-off specialist. Now we have Ian Fitzgerald passing around to Hudiker, and they seem they start to get the, the offense rolling. Noah was not joking. That number 25 has been throwing me off. Every time I look at my sheet, I go, uh, who's 25? But, yeah, Ian Fitzgerald. You viewers, this is your lesson. Make sure you always know where your jersey is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, apparently Ian Fitzgerald lost it earlier this season, had to go through a number change halfway through to the chagrin of uh, commentators everywhere. And Ian Fitzgerald doing all he can to keep it in his stick, but loses it before Clemson is called for the foul. Looks like we've got a timeout here, and we're going to take it with them. You're listening to Auburn Club Lacrosse on WEGL 91.1 FM from the Auburn Sportsplex. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Auburn Sportsplex as the Auburn Club Lacrosse team hosts Clemson. The score is 5-4 to four in favor of the Auburn Tigers right now. Auburn on offense. Zach Jones from the far side of where we are loses it. And it will be Clemson ball off of Zach Jones' stick. And Clemson's heading the other way. Clemson just starting to pick up momentum slowly and more slowly, but it's it's still coming. They, they've outmatched Auburn in goals this quarter, and although it's been slow, that's all you need in lacrosse. Still two quarters left. They're just slowly picking away at this Auburn defense. Over the goal line extended, makes a move along the crease and loses the ball. Great defense from the Tigers when you get in tight like that. Risky pass from Craig Morgan. You never want to throw it back into the middle as a goalkeeper. He broke the cardinal rule as a goalie. And that ball is going Auburn's way after it comes off of Clemson's stick. Oh, and they uh, reverse the wow. call. Wow. The ref from the other side reverses the call of the one right in front. And Clemson has the ball on attack again. They heard that one singular Clemson fan screaming and decided to give him some justice. He was not very happy about that. But you do not see that every day. Clemson back on offense, working the ball around. Ian Jackson gets a shot, goes wide, but Clemson will regain possession. Zach, that one had some pace on it too. That's scary for any Auburn defender, and especially Craig Morgan after that near goal from them recently. You don't want any shot with that pace coming at you. And a pass across the crease almost gets to the weak side or back side but that one's taken care of by Auburn's defense. Behind the oh back my. pass from Clemson, and oh, oh my, my gosh. What a pass from Gennaro Petrangolo over to Ryan Haley. Behind the back pass into an underhand shot. What a play. 20-20 vision right there. And for Ryan Haley on that goal, what a way to get your first goal of the season. That's, that's going to be in highlight tapes everywhere. That was incredible from the Clemson Tigers on that one. And the game is tied up 5-5 five to five with 6.35 left in the second quarter. We're back at a faceoff. Faceoff infraction by the Tigers. And Clemson has the ball with a little bit of momentum here as they get going, trying to get a lead. Zach, you know, one thing about these faceoffs is I feel like so many of them end up in infractions. I want to see these guys go at it. I want to see that head-to-head -head battle. But the referees like to blow the whistle on those. Well, you, c you can't give any, any bit of advantage to one side. If they go a split second ahead of the other uh, face-off guy, then it's, it's an infraction. You've got to call it. You've got to give it even playing field for both, yeah, both they, guys. Yeah, they do a good job of calling it fair. I don't know. Maybe I'm too football-brained and just want to see two <laughs> guys just thug it out. But here we go anyways. Clefson with the ball on the far side. Makes a move. Gets into the arc. Back outside. Working it around. Clemson off the post. Now we have a run out for the ground ball. Bodies are flying everywhere. No one has it yet. It's flipped out ahead. Looks like it'll fall to Auburn, and it does on a fast break now. The Tigers over to Hudiker. Hudiker. Oh, down and almost loses it, but now in X is Hudson Carter. He works it around the crease and tries to go underhand, but that goes wide. Still Auburn ball. And, Zach, we just talked about how Hudson Carter plays bigger than he is. Maybe that's one case where he doesn't, just a little bit over his stick, but still going to stay with this Auburn offense and now is in the hands of a guy who is in the 100-point club for Auburn, Zach Jones. So don't think they're too worried about it. Yeah, Zach Jones, uh, another one of the Tigers in the 100-point club. Last week, uh, Jordan Selesley joined the 100-point club. Yeah, big congrats to Selesley. Now they are the only two Tigers on the team that are in that prestigious club. To Leslie now, oop, loses the handle on it, surveys his options, and he's going to take a shot just over the net, but that'll stay Auburn ball with Hudson Carter back there. Auburn's going to have to start playing with a little bit more urgency on this possession here. Shot clock's down to just under 30 seconds, so they have to go. Hudson Carter gets a little of a bit of a go screen from Fitzgerald, lets the shot fly off of Hennessy's foot in goal. And Auburn somehow retains possession on that around X. 
back up top for Hudiker. Hudiker gonna swing it over to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald over to Miles Lobato. Down to X for Jordan Selesley. And keeping that possession there was huge because Hudson Carter made that pass as he was diving onto the ground and that resets that shot clock. Auburn has a new 80. Wow, what a shot by Miles Lobato. Gets the shot, gets the pass from Jordan Leslie from goal line extended, gets it and just rips it into the top right corner. Not much Clemson can do about that one. And Tigers, or the Auburn Tigers have another lead, <laughs> six to five. And Lobato there, just open goal, open, no defender in front of him. That's his 12th goal on the year. The captain out of Great Falls, Virginia, adds another point to his resume for his junior campaign. Aiden Garrett back up for the faceoff. I can't quite see who's in it for Clemson. Clemson had Maxwell Williams in That's that right. faceoff. A guy who was, I believe, 0 0 on the year for faceoff. Yeah, so, I had not new taken face. one until this game. I think he took one a little bit earlier. But yeah, normally Clemson has just one faceoff specialist. We've seen at least two guys come out here and take one. Yeah, interesting time for Clemson's head coach to experiment with new guys, especially as we're late season. They're vying for any opportunity they can get to move up in playoffs as those come along. That's right, as we see a shot by Chris Bassich go wide. Auburn takes possession, goal line extended, coming around the arc on the near side. Thomas Hudiker with a shot, goes chest left, low of the net, but Auburn will keep the ball. There's three, just over three minutes and 20 seconds left to play in this quarter. If you're just joining us, Auburn lacrosse is up one as they just throw it away there, and Clemson's going to get the ball. Auburn has six, Clemson has five, and Auburn took an early lead. Clemson battled back, and now they are looking to tie it up on this possession. That was a beautiful move right there in the midfield. Yeah, Clemson now with some pace getting forward. Oh, but he leaves it too high for his cutting teammate. That'll be out of bounds back Auburn's way. And just as they thought they were getting possession back, they throw it away. How history repeats itself, Jack, or Zach, excuse me, but Jack is my name. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, Auburn's going to retain possession, and Jackson Derrick is going to hold it in the midfield. Jackson Derrick over to Andrew Luff. Luff taking it down to the X for Hudiker. Hudiker. Going right, swim move left, back right, around the crease. And the pass, I'm not sure who that was to. I'm not sure either, but once again, it's just thrown away. That's a third possession in a row between these two teams where offensive possessions are just wasted. Yeah, and you can't waste offensive possessions like that in a close game like this. Six to five, two minutes left in this half. You got to you got to take every possession because each one counts. Yeah, and this Clemson offense is looking to make it count now. Bunch of goal scores in the mix for them. Ian Jackson, like we talked about. Also, Ryan Haley with his first goal in the season in this game. He's looking to have a brace. So lots of threats for this Auburn defense. Clemson working it around, being patient, patient with what they have. Excuse me, 50 seconds on that shot clock. And beautiful offense from Clemson as Tyler Roscoe finds a free man down in the crease, but he can't put it on frame, goes over the uh, over the bar, and Auburn has possession. And I know if you're Clemson's offense, you want that one back. He was wide open one-on-one -on -one with Captain Craig, but we call him Captain Craig for a reason here, Zach. He intimidating force in front of the goal, and Clemson's offense goes just wide. Huge situation saved there by Auburn's defense. Zach Jones lucky that pass that fell incomplete falls to Thomas Hudiker as he retains possession at the top of the attacking zone. He'll fire it over, roll it over to Jordan Selesley as they get the offense going. And I like what Hudiker did there too. Three possessions were, two of them were a turnover, third almost turnover. Hudiker just slows it down. He knows they're up by one, no rush. Great job by Selesley on there. The defender has him beat, has the bottom of his stick, the butt of his stick held, flicks it up. Ball falls out, but it's Leslie able to get the ball back and get a shot on frame before it's saved by Hennessy. And the Clemson Tigers are going the other way. Clemson running full speed, whistles from the ref. 
It'll be a timeout for Clemson. 35.5 seconds left. And we'll head to a break with them. Um, we'll be right back from the Auburn Sportsplex. Welcome back to the Auburn Sportsplex as the Auburn Tigers lead the Clemson Tigers 6-5 to five with 35 and a half seconds left. Clemson has the ball, looking to tie it up as they go into the half. Now, Zach, with such short time, who do you think this Clemson offense wants the ball in the hands of? Personally, I'm thinking Tyler Roscoe. He's had a couple disgusting fakes this game. Yeah, Tyler Roscoe has had a great game uh, getting it, faking it, getting the Auburn players out of their shoes, but it's hard to take it away from Holden Morrison, who has 44 or 46 points on the year coming into this one. Clemson working it around, goal line extended, swims back above the arc, cross field pass. And we're down to under 10 seconds. Ian Jackson has his shot saved by Captain Craig Morgan, and the Tigers get it up. Zero seconds on the clock, and that'll be halftime. The Auburn Tigers lead six to five in the Auburn Sportsplex. We'll be right back after halftime.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this game. If you're just joining us, it's currently halftime as we're about to get set for this third quarter. Auburn leads, but only by one goal, 6-5. to five. It's been a pretty back-and-forth matchup. Auburn started out with a quick 5-2 lead at the end of the first, but Clemson has clawed their way back and a Tiger... Tiger mono e mono matchup. I'm Jack Corbett. I'm joined here by Zach Card and uh, Noah, and we are Noah Phillips. There you go. First name, last name, treatment. <laughs> Took a second, and yeah, we're gonna be calling second half of this game for you all. Quick update across other Auburn sports. Auburn baseball is down in the bottom of the sixth, five to four to Texas A&M in softball. Just lost to number four Tennessee, five to one. We might give you some March Madness updates as well. We have it all here on Weagle ninety one point one FM. Zach, what were some of your takeaways in the first half? You can't count this Clemson team out. They're always ready to get back in the game. When you thought Auburn threw a, a nice haymaker in the beginning, going up five two, like you said, Clemson came back. Uh, tied it up at 1.55 before Auburn got another goal be just before the end of the half. But, yeah, you can never count this Clemson team out. Yeah, they've proved that here tonight as we are about to get set for this face-off in second half action. Aiden Garrett's been super solid up there in the first half. He's returning for the Auburn Tigers, and we're off. And we have a false start. <laughs> Clemson's going to secure the ball there, and we are jumping straight into it. Clemson's going to move into the to top third of this field. Ian Jackson currently with the ball. He has 13 goals and 9 assists on the season. Super solid for Clemson this year as they are just going to hold possession and move it around the top of the key. Clemson far side, swinging it all the way around. It's going to end up in the stick of Adam Neal. He cuts it to the middle, gets a bump, but has a shot anyways, and it's going to go wide right. Yeah, Ian Jackson right on the front of the crease. Not sure how he missed that target. Almost wide open, one-on-one, -on -one, tries to go above Craig Morgan, but pushes it just above and wide right. Clemson is going to keep the ball, though. 45 seconds on this shot clock, and they're going to try to go to work here. Tyler Roscoe, we talked about, if you're joining us for the second half, he had quite the first half, and he picks up right where he left off. That's a goal for Roscoe. That's his second of the night, and that's a brace. It's now a tie game. Great job by Roscoe. Gets him going full speed, drops his shoulder, then spins back around to his right. Going left, drops his shoulder, spins back to his right, and just lets a shot go. Top right corner, Craig Morgan can't do much about that one. Yeah, and Zach, he did a great job of creating space there. He knew he wanted it on that right side. Did a quick little spin move and created that separation. So we go to another faceoff. This time, no infraction. Aiden Garrett's going to keep it. Huge hit. That's a haymaker. Flags are flying, but Auburn keeps it anyways as they move up into the offensive half. Clemson defense trying to recover, and it looks like Auburn is going to hold the ball. Jamie Maroney almost loses it, but he is going to bring it back out to the top of the key. Another foul I'm not so sold on for Clemson. Maybe he cross-checked him, left a little bit of a stick in while he was hitting him, but I, not much there if you ask me. But Auburn has a chance to score a goal or go one man up. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, Zach. I'm not sold on that one either. That was a nifty little behind-the-back pass there by number 25 for this Auburn offense, Ian Fitzgerald. And now they're still trying to go to work. Has a shot, but ball is loose. Body's flying on the ground, but I think it will be recovered by the Clemson Tigers. Yeah, it will be. And great job there from – <clears throat> excuse me, Casey Lynchoni was getting beat. Oh, excuse me, not Casey Lynchoni. Miles Lobato was getting beat, getting beat up uh, by the defender there. Turns back, gets a step on him, goes low. Hennessy meets him low uh, and gets the save on the shot. Great offense and great defense for both teams. Yeah, fantastic effort by both sides of the ball as we are about to get back under play. Hudson Carter bringing the ball in. 13-17 left to go in this third quarter tie game as Auburn looks to get ahead once again. That penalty was only a 30-second penalty, so nothing major. Uh, and that'll be over in just 20 seconds. Auburn going to have to have some quick offense here. Thank you for that, Zach. I'm notorious, notoriously bad about pointing out penalties as it is a scrap for this ball. Clemson is going to come away with it, and they're going to look to get their first lead of the game. That's right, and they just killed that penalty nice and easy. Well, that was a risky pass there. Clemson's keeper, Hennessy, almost threw it away, but they recover swimmingly, now moving into the offensive half. 
Yeah, it's like Jamie Maroney didn't even see the ball coming in. He had a perfect opportunity to intercept that, that pass from Hennessy. Uh, and it just seemed like he wasn't even aware that the ball was in the air. Yeah, and I think that comes down to experience there. Maroney has been so solid for this Auburn team, but he's also only a freshman. So I think little awareness, things like that, are going to come with time as this Clemson offense taking their time. No need to rush anymore. They're back at even Stevens, and they are just going to keep moving this ball around, waiting for a look they really like. 33 seconds left on this shot clock, though. And Auburn's bench is getting into it. Defensive master class by the Auburn defense. Andrew Grubb putting him on clamps. Yeah, and Andrew Grubb proving why he's in the midseason rookie of the year watch list. Uh, top three of the rookies, and he's putting on a clinic, like you said, defensively. Yeah, he's grubbing. He is grubbing indeed. Clemson defense still trying to go to work. Only six seconds left on this shot clock. Swimming defense, a flag goes. But I'm not sure about that one, although it looked like Eamon Cummins for the Auburn's defense just pancaked him. Yeah, I, to me it looked like the Clemson attacker fell to his knees. Maybe it was a little bit over the top by Eamon Cummins, but it seems like a clean hit. Don't fall. It's lacrosse. Yeah, and as Eamon Cummins heads off the field, it's a new 80 for Clemson Tigers. And how quick the tides turn there. It'll be a 30-second power play for the Tigers. They'll have another, or <laughs> the Clemson Tigers did it once again. Man, it's hard. Fast offense. It is hard habit to break here. If only half of all the nation's schools mascots weren't the Tigers, but here we are. <laughs> Clemson's offense still trying to get it going, but that shot is going to be deflected, and Auburn's defense will be closest to the ball. They're going to bring it back up into the offensive half now. Tyler Roscoe starting to feel a little bit, having a great game. Let's that one go, and a big <laughs> slip there. Are we calling that a trick Tigers. play? Oh, no, he's he's injured, but he slipped, and it went perfectly in the hands of Maroney. He's going to walk it off, it looks like. And Brody Mize, yeah, is going to walk that one off. Tough slip. Sorry for chuckling. Yeah, just unfortunate timing there. It almost looked like it was going to work out, but obviously, yeah, we never want to see injuries here on the broadcast. Wish the best for Brody as Jamie Maroney swings around the back into Zach Jones's hands. They're going to move it around the perimeter of this field before trying to go to work, get a goal. Headbutt by Lobato looked like Hudson Carter with a little bit of space. He is going to take his time. Beautiful goal by Fitzgerald there. Beautiful wraparound, and Hennessy had no chance. I th believe that's the second goal of the night for Ian Fitzgerald, and that is also his 23rd on the season. Yeah, great misdirection by Hudson Carter going around the other side of the X, dumps it off to Fitzgerald. He runs back the other side around the crease and just easy one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, dumps it off. Beautiful goal indeed, and... Auburn takes the lead once again, 7-6. to six. There's 10-31 left in this third quarter. As fi we get to face off, Clemson is going to win the ball this time. And they are going to bring it back to the top of the key. Yeah, Maxwell Williams, we said this is his first game doing face-offs. He wins one there. A big win for Clemson as they try and get back into this one. Yeah, for, head, one for head coach for Clemson, Andrew Tobias, sometimes experimenting with new guys pays off like it did right there. They're going to look to tie this game back even once again. Moving it around the perimeter for Clemson. Can't get anything to go. This Auburn defense not biting on anything so far, but now Clemson tries to make a move. Oh, good luck, but great interception there by Ethan Pustizi. Just stuck his stick up, and that ball fell right into the net. Now Auburn's looking for the counter. Yeah, great job by Pustizi. He's got the long pull for a reason. You might as well use all six feet of it. Get your stick way up there above where, you, where the attacker doesn't think you'll even have a shot at intercepting it. Get up there and get the Tigers on offense. Oh, it's Leslie. Threw it to the midfield. Looked like that Auburn offense was about to flow, but the ball just slips out of the stick. Now Clemson's moving, and a great save. By Craig Morgan, a flag, oh, it was a goal, excuse me. A flag went up, it was hard to see. Ball got lost, but Clemson is going to tie it up. Yeah, Holden Morrison on that one. Quick offense for the Tigers, an even faster fast break 
for the Clemson Tigers, excuse me. Uh, and you find Holden Morrison just on the edge of the crease, easy one-on-one, -on -one, fakes the, the shot once, puts it past Craig Morgan on the second attempt. Yeah, and Clemson's offense as they were moving, Holden Morrison was so close to the goal, I almost thought he didn't have the angle to get it off because the body of Craig Morgan I thought was going to shield it. But I did not see the ball go in, but I guess it just slipped right in. Yeah, just past uh, the, the right side of us looking at Craig Morgan to, the, to that right side of the goal. Bailey gets in there, and it'll still be a one-minute penalty for the Tigers for that late hit after the shot went into the net. And with 9.18 left to go in this third quarter, not only is it a goal by Clemson, but that penalty gets them ball back as a huge shot is ripped towards Craig Morgan, but he is going to recover. No two goals for Clemson. We are going to keep it even. And a Carico making moves. Oh, my goodness. Lost three Clemson defenders right there. He is fantastic at getting it in the defensive zone and just attacking and getting it up to the offensive zone, getting it past that press in the midfield. He's been fantastic at that facet of the game. Yeah, I love watching Anna Carrico play, especially now that I can properly say his last name. That always helps. First game of the season, that was a different story. But uh, Auburn now moving into the offensive half, trying to get some magic to happen as Fitzgerald looking for another goal. He has a shorter defender on him, looking to use his size, but he's going to throw it away to Carter. And Carter's just going to hold it. Yeah, just surveying his options, brings it around up to Miles Lobato. And in such a fast-paced game as lacrosse, I love to see poise from players realizing that they don't have to go 100% speed 100% of the time and just – surveying the field, but Hudson Carter there going to work on that Clemson defender. Clemson does not bite, though. Fitzgerald trying to make something happen. Only 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Auburn's got to go. Back to the top of the key. So Leslie going to make a move. Has it with the left. It's going to go over the bar, but it is going to stay here with this Auburn offense. Tries to have another one, but great defense by Clemson. Shot clock violation. The Clemson Tigers are going to get this ball back. Yeah, great defense by the Clemson Tigers on that one. Shut down any offense that the Auburn Tigers had on that one. I just keep wanting to say Tigers. We uh, should just start calling one. them the War Eagles or something. I don't oh, know. Oh, no, we, I'm not doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. They gave us two options for a reason. It doesn't have the ring to it. I agree. Ian Jackson now bringing it into the offensive half for Auburn. It's going to get thrown over to Roscoe. He's had a great game so far. And now they are going to move around the side of the field. Clemson with a new guy in, number 34. We've not seen much action from him tonight. They're trying to go to work. On the ground, ball is loose. Great defense by Auburn. Comes into the hands of, of Coley Blith, who is going to hold on to that ball. Now Auburn's heading the other way with Lencioni, one of the captains for Auburn. He's running, surveying the field, finds Maroney. Maroney thought about it. Lobato into the middle. Behind the back. That's showtime. Great feed in by Zach Jones. Comes in from the X over to goal line extended and finds, I believe, that Len Lencioni who makes a great cut in down to the crease. And behind the back, what a finish. So sweet. And we saw a behind-the-back goal earlier this season from Hudson Carter. So funny that they were both playing on that offensive possession. I guess it runs in that Auburn blood to just have a disgusting behind-the-back goal. But as we are back to face off once again, Auburn up by one. Seems like the storyline of this game, just back and forth. But Clemson gets the ball. Their offense is moving, advancing it up the field quick. But Auburn's defense is going to get a chance to settle down and reset so they can keep this Clemson team at bay. Yeah, just when you think one team is starting to get all the momentum, it swings back the other way. The pendulum keeps going back and forth. Yeah, and you couldn't have timed that better. Maybe this is the time where Auburn gets some momentum. Great stop by Eamon Cummins. And this is some pace we've seen right here. Absolutely blistering from Caleb Karanka. He put on the Jets right there. That might be the fastest I've seen any Auburn player run all season. Yeah, we need to track his speed on that one because he was yeah, moving. We need a 40 time. These guys need to go out to the NFL combine. But uh, Maroney now holding the ball. Maroney with 14 goals and four assists on the season. He's had a great freshman campaign. Looking for that 15th now. Swings it over, however. Unselfishness from the freshman. One more shot by Bocic. 
looked like it just didn't leave the stick how he intended it to, and that's going to go wide left. Yeah, I think it just kind of dragged in his, his pocket a little bit, didn't snap out of his stick like he might have expected it to, but Auburn keeps possession. Yes, Hudiker now with possession. He's going to swing it over to Andrew Luff. New face from this Auburn offense, six goals and four assists on the season. Ball is now loose. It's a scramble. Maroney's in there. Cl three Clemson guys are in there. The whistle is blown. It is going to stay Auburn ball. Ref called a stick hold on the Clemson Tigers on that one. So Auburn gets the ball down a goal line extended, and they'll swing it in. Bocic swings it over to Luff. Back to Bocic. He's another, another case. He's going to take his time here. Fakes left, goes left, has a shot with the left, and scores with the left. Auburn goes up two goals, eight to six, after ba nine to seven after Bocic gets a goal. Yeah, Bocic, he looked like he was going to go left. He's been going left all game. Kind of sells the little jab to the right, the little hesitation move, and able to explode to his left, get it on that strong side for him, and just unleash a shot right past Tennessee. Tigers up, well, Auburn Tigers up by two. Yeah, and this this applies to multiple sports, but being a left-handed player is just such an advantage because defenders are, are raised up and taught to guard right-handed players. So when you put on a lefty, it's a completely new way of thinking, and Bocic uses that to his advantage there as Auburn does control the ball on offense. Now in the hands of Maroney once again, they're going to try to get up by three as we have some commotion in the middle of the paint in a – flag goes up. Refs blow the whistle. I guess they're going to talk about what the flag was away from the ball and he waves and one ref waves it off. No penalty on that play. A rare wave off there as we are underway still in this third quarter. Just under five minutes to play in Auburn lacrosse looking to get up three goals in this third quarter. Zach Jones moving around the outside. He throws it, ends up back in the middle, has a shot, but it is not going to hit on goal. It's going to get deflected. Does bounce back out to the Auburn offense, though. Ian Fitzgerald makes a run. Oh, my goodness. Fitzgerald slots it into that bottom right corner, and Auburn goes up three. Fitzgerald gets a little bit of a ghost screen there, bringing in some basketball terminology from uh, Celesley on that one. Uh, defenders think they're going to switch. No switch happens. A little bit of miscommunication from there. And Fitzgerald is wide open down the lane, gets an easy shot, and just basically rolls it past Hennessy. Yeah, that was one of the smoothest goals you're going to see all night. Just all of a sudden, I think Fitzgerald rounded that corner, and he, he it's a 1v1. And almost that's that's textbook by Fitzgerald. He's done that a thousand times, and that's almost a guaranteed goal for Auburn every time. As we're back to face off, ten to seven, Auburn does have the lead, but we've seen a three goal lead before get blown. So no promises for this Auburn team right here. And this might be the star. Another face off infraction by Auburn gives Clemson the ball. But we've seen Auburn's defense really tighten up off of these and, and get the ball back for their offense. Yeah, Auburn, Auburn's defense has great pieces that just keep it keep Clemson's offense to bay. Pustizzi has been a force all year. Lynchoni, Anna Carrico, all, all great forces on defense. Andrew Grubb as well. And Clemson, I think Clemson's in dire situation. I think they need a goal here. Yeah, you got to rely on your best players, Holden Morrison, Landon Snyder, Aiden McNulty, your best goal scorers to get yourself a goal to get back in this one a little bit. Yeah, and Zach, that's one storyline. Aiden McNulty, I don't know if we've seen him at all this game. Number one for Clemson's offense. I can't recall seeing him on the offensive side, but if he has, it's definitely been a quiet game for a guy that's only a sophomore and has had 26 goals this year. And as Auburn collects the ball, they're going to move to the offensive half. Maroney, good job recovering for his teammate right there, and he's going to advance it, try to make a run, but pull it back and hold this ball. The whistle is blown. Honestly, Zach, I, are you sure why the whistle was blown there? I'm unclear on the call. I think one of the Auburn defenders was off sides, but I'm not sure. Yeah, we're not sure about that one here at the Auburn Sportsplex, but it is going to become back in the hands of this Clemson offense. 
as they're looking to get their eighth goal on the night. 2.53 left to play in this third quarter. Ian Jackson fakes, goes to his right, bottom corner. And just as we said it, Clemson gets an eighth goal of their night. It is a two-point game. Great game so far by Ian Jackson. Just as I said, you got to lean on your best goal scorers. One, one name I left out, Ian Jackson, makes me pay for leaving him out. Ian Jackson, uh, he, gets, he has an earpiece on. He's listening to you. He's not happy. And he made, he made, he made it known. 10-8, Auburn up by two. But we've seen a three-goal lead disappear before. And there's a good chance it'll disappear again. Don't go anywhere, folks. This is a great game as we're back to face off. And Aiden Garrett's looking to get another win for this Auburn team. There's a scrap for it. Ball is loose, and Aiden Garrett collects it. Two guys on him, absolutely pestering him, but he gets the ball away. Jamie Maroney finds a guy in the midfield. Passing play. That's beautiful. Hudson Carter finishes that very solid play. Just a beautiful team play by Auburn right there. Yeah, great job by Hudson Carter. Gets the pass from Jack Slack, also a great name. Um, gets it. Jack Slack has the wherewithal. He's got an open look, but he knows if he gets that extra pass over, his teammate's going to have an even better look. He gets that pass over, and that's just what happens. Ball ends up in the back of the net. Great team chemistry there from Garrett to Maroney to the slack attack to Hudson Carter, and Auburn is back up three. Ball is still loose. Auburn is going to collect it, though. It ends in the hands of Jamie Maroney once again. And Maroney's done a great job this game at not only keeping possession, but also slowing it down and letting his offense get set. Yeah, that's a great, great point. When you're coming off the face-off, the specialists and those lines are made for face-offs. Uh, you want to get them off the field and put your regular offensive guys on the field as quick as you possibly can. And Maroney does a great job by allowing that to happen. Jack Slack enters back into the defensive half. Andrew Luff's going to come in, try to make some magic happen for this Auburn offense, along with Bocic. Had a goal earlier, looking for his second. Has no room there. But this Auburn offense is going to keep continuing to chip away. Hudiker might have gone away with a stick hold there. But no call from the referees. Just under a minute and a half left in this quarter. Auburn has 20 seconds on the shot clock. And there was an attempt there by there Hudson was. Carter. But great stop there by Hennessy for the Clemson Tigers. And they're looking to cut the deficit once again. Although Auburn's offense doing a good job of pressing them right now, not making it easy to get into the other half of the field. That's right, part of the, the first defender is the attacker and the first attacker is the defender. And so that's the way that these guys look at it on the attacking end. You're the first defender. It's your responsibility not to let the ball into that half. Clemson's offense gives a lob pass there to Steven Wilburn and now we're making it back around the perimeter of the field. They're going to reset a little bit. Drew Staley for Clemson taking his time. But, Zach, do you think that's the right move here? Yeah, I think it's just the time you just got to get fresh legs. Oh, great interception. Oh, and then a great deflection. Oh, wow. That whole play, I just feel like I need to dissect it. A lot happening there. Great, great interception by Pustizzi, but then his long pass gets deflected by Clemson offense. They have a wide open shot on goal, but they cannot get it to go as Captain Craig Morgan blocks a shot opportunity there and chucks it to the other side of the field. A little careless, but Hudson Carter is going to collect it, so it works out at the end. Another behind the back pass. He is elite at those, and this offense is moving. Lynchoni has one, has a goal. Top bins for Lynchoni. And Auburn is going to go up four goals, their biggest lead of the night. And that's exactly what I said when I say the defense is the first attack. We see Craig Morgan get an excellent point and Blake save. Fires up, maybe a little bit risky to Hudson Carter, but um, able to get the ball, a great behind the back pass, and he's just down the pipe. Lanchoni, so much power on that shot. We've seen it already, and he fires it in. Four goal lead for Auburn. And the junior from Alamo, California. There might not have been any better time for that to come. Two seconds left in that third quarter when he scored, and that is the end of this third quarter. Auburn 12, Clemson 8. You're watching Weagle 90.1.1 FM.
and welcome into this fourth quarter between the Auburn Tigers and the Clemson Tigers. Auburn leads 12-8 over Clemson in the final game of the regular season here in the Auburn Sportsplex for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn will have one game left against the Alabama Crimson Tide, and that's a big hit there to start this game up. But Dominic Anacarico <laughs> is going to carry this one across, and there's a referee's whistle. It'll go the other way for Clemson. Again, Clemson going to your right, Auburn going to your left. Derek DeAngelis there just – uh, after that big hit by Auburn, Clemson tried to retaliate, and he did a good job selling that fall. I don't know. That just made me laugh as Clemson sets into their offense. Clemson will take this. That's a, hey, that's a trip as that's going to be a leg trip. There's your penalty flag up in the air. It'll be on number 45, Amon Cummins. Clemson in to score, but this one on the ground is picked up by Clemson. And just for Eamon Cummins there, that's just that's an awkward situation to be in. Clemson offensive player falls, and he's just on top of him. And I, I I don't even think he was intending for it to be a foul. I just think he got caught in between the Clemson offensive player's legs with this stick. So that's just unfortunate for Cummins. He heads to the penalty box and for 30 seconds, and now Clemson is up a man. Clemson up a man with 14-12 left to go in this fourth quarter. They're still down by four. Clemson. On the right side, that's number three, Ian Jackson. Jackson will take it back, a long pass uh, to number 16. He's going to shoot, and he's going to score. Gennaro Pentrongolo, and he held that follow through. He scored the shot. That was a dirty celebration as Clemson gets into three. Indeed, and I feel like the Auburn bench will say scoreboard as they lead by three with 13.56 left to go in this fourth quarter. I'm sorry, folks. If you missed the first uh, quarter of this game, I got Georgia Tech's roster somehow. So I am struggling a little bit with Clemson's rosters. I apologize full heartedly for the team from the Atlanta Atla ALC. Auburn, though, is going to pick this one up. It's number 22, Aiden Garrett. He's in on oh. goal, looking for another one, and there's a hit to the back of the head. Two oh. flags are up in the air, and it's deserved. Yeah, and the Clemson player, jo Jose Martinez, he knew that it was an accidental play. He went over immediately to Aiden Garrett, made sure he checked on him, made sure he was all right. So, love to see the sportsmanship, but just seeing that at all, that was very scary from over here. Indeed it was, and we wish the best for Aiden Garrett. It wasn't uh, necessarily that the helmet got taken off uh, prematurely or anything like that. I think just physics kind of took that one down. It wasn't a uh, – Mal intent. But it'll, either way, it'll be Auburn's ball. It looks like it's going to be 23 for Clemson. Uh, Faber Austin will take the penalty set for a full minute. Auburn looks to get a goal back as they'll be man up. 60 seconds. Number 25, Ian Fitzgerald will take this one from the bottom of your screen or the uh, left of the goalie. Hudiker. Back to Fitzgerald. Back to Selesley. Selesley. Back to Zach Jones. Two seniors. Now over to Maroney. Selesley. Maroney. Zach Jones from the goal line extended. Fakes the pass to the inside. Now over to Ian Fitzgerald, who's going to take a long shot that goes just a little bit left. 39 great. seconds. Uh, still man up for all. That's a great look, though, from Fitzgerald. Only unlucky for him. Right-handed player. Defender coming from his right, so he has less time to get that shot off. And that's just an opportunity where you want that, that Clemson defender on your left hip. Maroney is going to pick this one back up. Now over to Jordan Selesley. Ground pass to number 25, Ian Fitzgerald. Hudiker carry this one in. He's still looking for a pass. 17 seconds left with a man up. Hudiker back to number 29. Selesley pass to the middle for Maroney. Hits the ground first, but hits the top of the net. 13-9 is your score as Maroney gets one through. And, Noah, I think I think that was the lacrosse version of an alley-oop. The lob passed by the Auburn player, Jamie Maroney. It looked like a dunk. He just dunked that right into the goal over Hennessy's head. And, like you said, Auburn's going to get up four. Could have hanged from the rim on that one. Aiden Garrett back to take this face off for the Auburn Tigers. Referees whistle. This one will be awarded to the Auburn Tigers on a face-off infraction with 12.54 
left to be played. And it looks like one. Aiden Garrett, sorry to interrupt you, Noah, is healthy. He came in on that faceoff, so love to see that. Don't want any concussion protocol or anything there. Maroney, or excuse me, uh, Hudson Carter will pick this ball up. Now over to number 32, Andrew Luff. Luff back to number 13, Chris Bocic. Bocic makes the long pass back to Luff. Luff with a run inside. He's got a little bit of running room. That's a shot, hits the post and goes wide. Number six, Zach Jones now. Passes, tries to get back as I think they're going to call a step on the crease. Oh, no, excuse me. It appears a Clemson player is down behind uh, the crease as we're going to take a uh, quick break while this gets settled. You're listening to Weagle 91.1 FM. Welcome back into the Auburn Sportsplex. Auburn leads by four, 13-9 in this fourth quarter. 12-16 is all that we have left to be played as Auburn will play their final game of this regular season in the Auburn Sportsplex. Thomas Hudiker passes this one out to Bocic. Bocic, he'll carry it inside the attacking third now. Cuts to his left, goes to the middle. Pass to Hudson Carter who gets it. Ah, saved at the line there by Clemson's goalkeeper, number seven. Hudson Carter so smooth on that shot as well. He, his body was moving to the left as he was trying to place it in that right corner. Zach Jones over to number 13, Bocic, who can't get that one in. Excuse me, that was Maroney on the shot there, and they're going to call that Maroney stepped in the crease. This Clemson defense is now going to try to move it into the other half of the field. Really need to get it up to their offensive guys, trying to make some magic happen, but that ball is thrown away, and that's an easy pick for this Auburn defense as Bocic now moves it into the offensive half. Bocic into the attacking third. 11-27 left to be played in this fourth quarter. Auburn has uh, at least two more games left on the season. They, of course, have Alabama coming up next weekend uh, over in uh, Vestavia Hills, and then they will have the SELC uh, tournament, they'll face off against the second team in the north, and it'll go to that team, and right now it's looking like it's between Georgia Tech and South Carolina. That's a shot there that goes wide. Hudiker's looking to pick it up, but he cannot seem to find it, but they're going to rule it dead. I think it's going to be a hold. Yeah, Hudiker was just knocked down to the ground there. He had no chance to get any shot at that ball, and the referee saw that. G referee's great job promoting fairness in this game, so Auburn is going to get another chance at it. Hudiker took it from the goal line, extended, but it'll go backwards. Now he's running around the crease. He's going to get a spin move, spins back to his right, so he'll set something up. Slow it down like an 80s wrestling match. Hudiker passes from the goal line, extended over to number 32, uh, Andrew Luff. Luff now to Bocic. Bocic carries it to his left. He's got a lot of running room in front of him, passes back to Maroney. Maroney over to Luff. Luff. To Hudson Carter. Hudiker goes down, but that's a shot. Goes over the post. Zach, uh, Zach Jones closest to it. Almost said Zach Carr. <laughs> Hudiker's fall almost gave Hudson Carter the distraction he needed to get a shot off there. And he went for it. Just went over the bar. But it almost seemed to put the Clemson players, defenders on their heels a little bit. You, you can hear the referees uh, talking to each other. I believe it's due to the shot clock. Uh, as it just reset after that shot. I believe that is the issue. They are communicating to each other. Seventy-eight seconds at the moment. Ten twenty left on the game clock. Unlike last year, the uh, semifinals 
of the SELC tournament will not be in LaGrange, Georgia. I know we had fun on that trip last year, me and Alex Houston. I locked my keys in the car. Do not need to go into any further detail about that trip. Zach Jones, though, he'll pick it up from the X. Now over to Hudson Carter. Now over to number 29, Jordan Selesley. Now over to Bocic. Bocic, he'll carry it to his left side. Passes to the middle. Cannot find his target in Selesley as Clemson is going to pick this one up. Botch, uh, blah, blah, blah. Clemson, long pass over the middle of the field. Looking for somebody it is number five. It is now the fourth quarter instead of the third. 940 left in this fourth quarter. I forgot to hit my score bug button. Thank you to that fan, by the way. <laughs> if, she, if she watches this back, thank you for pointing that out to us. That's what's great about the Weagle lacrosse fan base. They're always looking out for me and Noah and Zach. And like you said, if anything comes up, you know, this is probably going to be one of the last broadcasts we have this year. If there's anything you guys want to see changed or have any recommendations uh, for us here at Weagle 91.1 FM to make this broadcast experience better, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we are always open to suggestions because if you just leave it to me, this will get pretty crazy pretty quick. As Dominic Anacarico is going to carry this inside, he loses his stick, uh, but the referee is going to wail or uh, whistle it dead. Uh, no, excuse me. No, they won't. Uh, okay, there, there's your whistle. As Clemson carries it across, they're very upset about that. Should have been whistled a whole lot sooner so they could get back in transition. 8.45 left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, well, I also think Clemson's bench, you know, if Clemson has the ball, why not let them play with the possession, give them the possession arrow? So I think Clemson's bench was upset that they made them stop play at all. Clemson looking for their 10th goal of this matchup. Very affordable, formidable ALC opponent in Clemson. Big hits there by Anna Carrico. There's the shot, though, and it's a goal for number 25 for Clemson. Uh, Drew Stanley, a freshman from Maryland. Yeah, and Drew Staley, they, Drew Staley there, excuse me, even though he has Andy Carrico on him, a huge guy, it doesn't matter. And it almost looked like Staley, that was with the offhand. It was with his, he threw it over his left shoulder, but he drove to his right, so it looked like he almost wanted that from the right side. So great ambidextrity there by Drew Staley. Aiden Garrett down again for the Auburn Tigers in the faceoff circle. Aiden Garrett's just a warrior. Got that hit on the head, and now he's back in the in the gauntlet. Just I just love watching players like that. Clemson will pick it back up. They'll carry it into the attacking third. That ball goes awry. 8-12 lets be played in this fourth quarter as they're going to call it out of bounds. Long pass over to number three, Casey Lincioni. And Sony, one of the uh, is going to kick one of the captains of this team is going to carry it into the attacking third and pass it off to Hudson Carter who's going to command the team to slow it down a little bit and set something up. Yeah, that's great leadership by Carter. I'm glad you saw that because there's no need for them to rush right now. That was a long pass from the defense, but now they can they can use this full 80. Maroney from the goal line extended at the top of your screen. Now over to Jordan Selesley. Passes back to Miles Lobato. Lobato carries it to his right, but it'll go inside to his left. Hudson Carter. Now over to number 25, Ian Fitzgerald. Takes a long shot, but it finds the back of the net. Fitzgerald, there's another one for you, son. 14-10 is your score, Auburn leads. Fitzgerald is just absolutely unreal at placement in his goals. It always seems like it ends up in a bottom corner, just like that one right there. Slots it right into that bottom left corner, and Hennessy had no chance. Auburn looking to get their ninth win of the matchup this year. Garrett back down on the face-off circle for the Auburn Tigers. This one on the ground, picked up again by Clemson. Clemson still looking for somewhere to go with it. He's going to have to go back across half, uh, half field. Didn't say court right there. Clemson in on goal. There's a shot. Goes wide left. Auburn, I think, closest to it. Yes, they were. I believe that's number uh, 45. Eamon Cummins is going to get the credit on that one. And for Clemson, even though that possession didn't end in a goal, I think we do need to show some love to Clemson's face-off specialist, Jose Martinez, 115-74 and 74 on the year. He's 
been a staple for this Clemson program. Fitzgerald takes it into the attacking third. He might do it himself. He'll have to pass it back out. A oh, hit there to the, to the uh, spleen of, the, of uh, Ian Fitzgerald. There's a lot of flags up in the air, but Fitzgerald is going to take a shot that goes left out of bounds as will we, we will address the penalties. Looked like Fitzgerald may have taken one on the kidneys there. I think Fitzgerald took more than one there. I mean, gosh, it almost seemed like after he complained about the hit, they targeted him more, and they came for blood there, that Clemson defense. But Fitzgerald is going to get the whistle pretty handily, and it will stay Auburn ball. If you watch any boxing, you've heard about what a kidney shot can do to you. It can do a whole lot worse. Um, Fitzgerald, though, tough, tough, tough going in there for a great shot. Just went a little bit too wide with it. 14-10 is your score. 6.41 on the game clock. A two-minute penalty for Clemson. It'll be on number f on uh, number five for the Clemson Tigers. And for head coach Andrew Tobias of Clemson, a two-minute penalty now is huge. That is so costly for this Clemson team. And where they go from here is a mystery. Penalty will be on uh, Braden Pritchard. Auburn has a man-up opportunity. So Leslie, Maroney, 60 seconds on the shot clock. Now back to Hudiker. Carter, passing around the bend is Auburn. So Leslie and Maroney. And they'll continue to work around the clock. Hudiker gives it back to Maroney now from the X. Maroney. Passes back to Zach Jones. Passes to the inside to Hudson Carter, and he takes a perfect one. Jones to Carter. 15-10 is your score. That was disgusting. That's all I have on that. That was beautiful. Perfection. Poetry in motion. I, lo I love that. That was poetry in motion. Six minutes even. Let's be played. Here in this fourth quarter, Aiden Garrett still taking the face-offs for this Auburn side. And you can hear Coach J.J. saying there's still a penalty. 119 will be left on that penalty. Aiden Garrett, though, he's going to pick this one up. Garrett makes a long pass to number four, Hudson Carter. Goal score from just a moment ago. Now over to number three, Casey Lincioni. That was a great awareness by uh, Aiden Garrett on that faceoff because he had a guy tracking him down, and that little pass over the head to get it set in this Auburn offense was just a really amazing heads-up play by Aiden Garrett. Zach Jones is going to lose it on the end as Clemson will take it the other way. Do want to give uh, a couple shout-outs to the seniors. Number one, Collie Blythe. Number two, Bradley Meach. Number 14, Hunter Buttersworth. Number 27, Jake Krivitz. Number 28, Michael Pinheiro. Number 29, Jordan Selesley. Number 37, Nick Pilia. Uh, number 12, Joey Denave. And I want to give a special shout out to number six, Zach Jones, as being my freshman year, the only guy I could pronounce uh, name on this team as Maroney's going to carry it inside. He's going to lose it, though, but it's going to be picked up by Andrew Luff. As who's going to lose it himself? Clemson will pick it up. And, Noah, because you mentioned Jake Krefitz there, I just I think this is a time where we give some more praise to Aiden Garrett to come in. He's a freshman and take the role of a senior who started at faceoff and just be extremely successful in that faceoff position as a freshman. Just major props to Aiden Garrett. Four minutes, 40 left in this fourth quarter. A whole lot of fours on the scoreboard. 15-10 is still your score. Clemson carries it to the left side. He takes a shot, but it's blocked by a defender. Greg Morgan picks that up. I believe that was number one, Collie Blythe, a senior making a great play for his team. And Blythe, now, though, he's coming inside over to Hudson Carter. Sorry to cut you off. I wanted to see the senior shoot there, man. No, me too. I was about <laughs> to say, and now it looks like he's going coast to coast. <laughs> we had the same thought idea there. Now it's over to number 13, Bocic. He'll carry it almost inside the attacking third for the Auburn Tigers, keeping it just outside with four minutes even left to go in this fourth quarter. Thank you again for listening to us here on Weagle 91.1 FM. Uh, something we can't do without Eagle Eye TV. They provide us with these cameras, and they do a fantastic job. You can check out their YouTube channel as well. They post fantastic television quality content. Is that the right word? 
Zach, and okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miles Lebedo with a shot, and he's going to score. And points right at a Clemson defender. I think they're going to get him for taunting there. 16-10, though, will be your score. Gosh, on the topic of taunting, I'm still thinking about that first quarter taunting call from Ethan Pustizi. That 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 point back, that look back was so disrespectful, but it was the greatest thing I've seen all day. Point will still stand. 16-10, three minutes, 33 seconds left in the game. They are going to call a taunting on number five, Miles Lobato, a junior from Langley, Great Falls, Virginia. That sounds like a great place to be. There's a pick for Clemson. They'll carry it to the left side. Clemson has to do a lot here. Needs six goals in three minutes and 15 seconds. Great defense from Casey Lynchoni. He gets open, though. This ball on the ground. Still looking for it. It's a scrum. Gah. That's going to be a penalty flag up in the air, and it will be on the Clemson Tigers. Auburn will look to be a man up just for a little bit. And Casey Lynchoni, like you said, great defense there. But I think that play was made by the help, help defense by Jack Slack to come over and close down that man. It's a, a 1v2 for him. He is absolutely nowhere to go. And, Noah, while we have a little break here, I want to give the people an update on some March Madness. 11 seed NC State is going to the Elite Eight over number two Marquette. That is a Cinderella. It is officially a Cinderella. We're speaking it into existence here. And they move on. Noah, do you have that in your bracket? I don't know if that in my bracket. Uh, I've, I've already lost. I've already given up. There is no shot for me. As Clemson will have to serve a, a one-minute penalty. That's 60 seconds. Auburn will be a man up looking to extend their lead to seven. And Noah, as a Kentucky native, I naturally had Kentucky and Auburn in my championship. Great time for my bracket as well. Well, I still have UConn going strongly for me, but don't look too much into that. As Ian Fitzgerald carries this one from the bottom of your screen, Hudiker nearly from the goal line extended back to Fitzgerald, back to number 29, so Leslie Jones still carrying around the bend as Auburn. Jones, so Leslie Fitzgerald. Fakes a pass, goes back to that original pass plan. Hudiker, now to Fitzgerald, back to Selesley. Comes in, long, a high pass to Zach Jones. Maroney carries it across the right side, back to Selesley. Selesley, back to Maroney. Maroney trying to get somewhere, finds Fitzgerald. Maroney back to Zach Jones. Now over to number 29, Jordan Selesley from the X. Selesley gets pass off to Hudiker. Hudiker. Back to number four, Hudson Carter. That's a no – ooh, that one hit the post. I thought that one was a goal for sure. Hudiker looking for it now. Uh, it will look like Hudson Carter will pick it up, though. Uh, back to even Steven, 16-10, a minute 55 left to go as Maroney shoots that one just a little bit wide right. And if, if you're Maroney there, I know you want the goal, but with a minute 49 left, a new 80 on the shot clock, I think I'm looking to hold this ball, just drag it out, just do a little passing around the perimeter as Hudson Carter looks like he's that's what they're going to do now, just moving the ball around slowly but surely. This ball will go out of bounds. It'll be Clemson going the other way with a minute 34. They're down by six. May need a miracle here at the Auburn Sportsplex to get this one. Clemson, though, will carry it inside. They're attacking third. Ins inside now is Clemson. He'll carry it to his left. Clemson now back to the top of the key. Minute 14, 60 seconds on the shot clock. Just 14 seconds separate those two. Clemson needs something in a bad way. Grab something for the ride home. Back to South Carolina. Yeah. I'm North up. Carolina. North Carolina. Ah, oh, wait. It, no, it is South Carolina. Shoot. Sorry. Yeah, uh, that's what I thought. That's a shot low. It'll go out of bounds. Greg Morgan was closest to it. Do want to give one last plug to Weagle here. April 12th, 2024 on Cater Lawn at 6 p.m. is our spring concert. So if you're in town, could be a great one featuring the Bard of Baldwin County, the band uh, Silhouette, and Easy Honey. It'll sure to be a fun time on Cater Lawn on April 2nd at 6 p.m. Clemson, carry this ball up. 42 seconds left here in this fourth quarter. 80 seconds on, oh, that doesn't matter anymore. Clemson in on goal. That's a, that's a golf swing, I think, there. 
or something. What would you call that? A little I think pick. He, he pulled out the 56 there, got a nice little chip, just went a little bit over the hole there. Yeah, that went over my head. I'm not really a big, big avid golfer. <laughs> Clemson, though, takes it from the X. Oh, we're having fun here, guys. 30 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Around the crease is Clemson. Back to the middle. There's a dunk, but it'll be a shot that's hit hard. Auburn closest to it. They could hold on to it for the last 21 seconds and get a big win here on senior night. 16-10 is your score. Clemson in desperation is going to press, but like you said, I think that's wraps unless Auburn really wants to just put the nail in the coffin. Meach is going to get tripped. And uh, not necessarily the play the senior wanted to go through. Yeah. Holding the ball there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That was just his legs got absolutely swept out from under him. But it doesn't matter because Auburn's going to sweep Clemson here. So he'll trade one sweep for another. Bradley Meach walking off of the field now. Could be his last time here at the Auburn Sportsplex. Had a fantastic career from a, a senior from Ashburn, Virginia. And just like all the seniors, that are fixing to graduate. Makes me thankful that I got one more. Hudson Carter, nine seconds left in this fourth quarter. I think he's going to try to hold it for four more seconds. Back to Selesley and now over to number 44, Dominic Anacarico, as he'll be the last one to touch it as Auburn grabs a 16-10 win here over the Clemson Tigers. They'll have one game left uh, as they advance their record to 9-4. and four. Meanwhile, Clemson drops to 5-5 five and five at 500 for the year. Jack, what did you see out of this team? I just think Auburn, you know, they had that senior night inspiration behind them, but I thought it was a very complete game by the Auburn Tigers. It wasn't one guy that was leading them in goal scoring. 16 goals from multiple different men on this team. Very balanced, and I also think they were super solid on defense. I thought they did great on the help side. Craig Morgan played his role like he usually does, and I just think this was a battle of the original campus versus the copy off, and I think the original campus won. Trying to hold back a laugh on that one. But, <laughs> folks, Auburn, again, grabs a 16-10 lead. It has been fun all year. I think we've made great strides, especially when you compare it to the last two years. Do not go watch that first year. I don't know what I'm doing, much like tonight where I brought Georgia Tech's roster. But either way, for Zach Card, Jack Corbett, our, our uh, good friend and helper of this program, Henry Nance, for myself, Noah Phillips, we thank you. And again, Auburn wins 16-10, War Eagle, and it's MCLA for life.